Richard Vanderblom, welcome to the show. You are going to be a speaker at the Uplift Live conference in Birmingham in March. Welcome aboard. Tell us, what do you know about LinkedIn? Thank you, John. First of all, thank you for having me both here on the show and uh, in March in Birmingham. What do I know about LinkedIn? Mm, I guess I'll know quite a bit, just like uh, I think all the other speakers. Um, have been active on LinkedIn since 2005. Started to give my first LinkedIn training back in 2009. So what I'll probably bring to this stage is about plus 14 years of experience on how to leverage this platform to grow your business. Basically, that's it, to grow your business, whether you are a solo entrepreneur or a marketing professional or whether you are in B2B sales. Um, that's basically what I, I hope to share with the audience. Awesome. And, and you're well known for your skills in social selling, but I think probably most people who are watching this or listening to this on the podcast will know you for your algorithm report you've become really famous for that and you've got more than 140,000 followers mostly off the back of that I would guess yep um, tell us a little bit about where the algorithm report came from and what kind of insights people get from that yeah um, well working with um, so, so so my main focus is to work with mid-sized larger enterprises and Back in 2018, we had to uh, enter, uh, well, two enterprise clients, and they were baffled by the fact that when they publish um, uh, a white paper or a really well thought article, they would reach, let's say, 5,000 views. And they were baffled by the fact that if they would publish like a team picture of like an event that they would participate in, like, I don't know, half the marathon of Boston, they would get like 30,000 views. And they were like, we, we want to switch that. You know, we want to have 30,000 views for the article and just 5,000 views for the. So they started to ask us questions. And back then, we, we only knew from our own experience, based on our own postings, what would happen, but we could only guess. And then I teamed up with uh, some really amazing people and, and they helped me to uh, I delivered them with the questions and they started to research like what happens if somebody likes, if somebody comments, what happens if you change the vote in terms of format. And basically we released like an algorithm report in October 2018. That was the first one. And it was actually shared first with the two clients and they were very, very enthusiastic about it. So I thought, okay, let's let's just publish it. And it went like, it went, it, it blew up, it blew up. It, I remember I had almost 1 million uh, uh views on that post which was for me back then it was like huge um so that was the start actually and back then i didn't thought even about redoing the same thing next year i just thought like okay it's a one-time exercise job done and then i think it was something in may 2019 may june of june 2019 that people people actually came back to me and said like are you going to do the research again this year because we have seen some changes and that was when, like, it occurred to me, like, hey, maybe if we do this on a more regular base, then, you know, people would benefit from it. So we started to do it again, October, same same month, 2019. It went even bigger. We had more data because we were more prepared. We know how to examine it. And, and that's actually how it, how it started. And, and, and indeed, you're right. That's when also my personal growth accelerated, my personal reach accelerated because... Social selling is really cool, but it's rather boring to post on. But if you post like the secrets of LinkedIn content algorithm, well, you probably know that. Then people like really want to have this and really grab, you know? Yeah. And and tell me, do you agree that the pace of change on LinkedIn is speeding up? Yep. In, in which case, how often are you now doing this algorithm report? Now, we, we switched already two years from really like creating the questions in may june passing them on and then we would give like we would have like two months of research and the report now we switch to ongoing research so uh, our team is ongoing research uh, is doing uh, ongoing research not necessarily because of the pace uh, with what linkedin is changing the algorithm but more that we like if something happens in February, like this February, we had a big algorithm change. It doesn't make sense to, you know, publish in November an algorithm report and say, hey, you know, eight months mm -hmm. ago this happened. So you need to adapt to that because like like people already notice, especially 
some of the heavy content creators, they notice it themselves. Like probably you also notice that now I see, especially in the last three, four weeks, I see like the reach is going down uh, for, for a lot of creators, also mine. So then I need to like, like directly switch with my team and say, hey, I want a data, I want a stats to back this up because this is what I'm seeing. So now it's ongoing. Um, but yeah, I do agree that the changes are more rapidly. Yeah. And, and probably because they're launching more features, more new stuff. And every time they launch new features, for example, collaborative articles, AI impacts the algorithm because they need to place it somewhere in the feed, which means, you know, the reach has to come from, from somewhere, no? Yeah, absolutely. And we're still six months away from our conference. So there's no way you're going to be able to work out what to tell us uh, in nope. six months time. But right now, can you give us any kind of insight on some piece of data or some insight that people might not necessarily know that, that they would benefit from knowing right now in late 2023? Um, wow, there's a lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, and I, I, I don't know what, what our listeners uh, know. Uh, so yeah, it, it, talking about a, the conference, I will create a deck like end of February to make sure that at the conference, everybody gets the, the latest news. But for now, something that really impacts the growth of your post positively is the amount of reposts uh, your post is getting, which back two years would practically do nothing for the reach. Now, if you get more people to repost your stuff, it accelerates your growth. Uh, and the other one, I think a lot of people know it, but it's it's still a good thing to emphasize is the your own engagement on other people's content. You know, it's really mm -hmm. like it's like LinkedIn is rewarding you for your own engagement on other people's posts. It's like they drive more traffic to your own post. If you play the game, they go like, okay, we reward you for your time and we drive more traffic to your post as well. I, I, for example, seen this with my own post. If I just publish in the morning and for some reason I don't have the time to be very active and engaging myself, I guess up to 20, 25% less traction than when I'm active like uh, around my posting time. Yeah, interesting stuff. I think the, the point you made about reposting is is important now that LinkedIn has relatively recently started showing the repost counter on public posts because they never used to do that. Nope. And so you were only guessing at how popular a post might have been based on reactions and comments. So I can see the psychological reason why reposts are a little bit more powerful. Yeah, and especially especially the instant repost, John. So And that's very interesting because that's not like the other social media platforms where if you share something and you write something of your own words you know, to guide it, it would create more impact. On LinkedIn, it's the other way around. Instant repost gets more visibility than a repost where you like have two or three lines of your own words. So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I'd re one thing I'd really love to know is whether a high number of saves on a post would increase its visibility, but you can't see how many people have saved a post, can you? No, but I'm 100% sure that people saving your posts obviously is a positive indicator to the LinkedIn algorithm that people are engaging. Yeah. I mean, it, it should be one of the most important indicators because people saving your post means, hey, I don't want to lose this type of content. So definitely. And it's a shame that you can't see it. Also, the number of people that ring the bell in your profile for me would be a very cool indicator if really people are engaged with the content. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to miss a single post of this person. But, you know, Absolutely. let's hope LinkedIn brings us more, uh, more data in the, in the near future. Yeah, let's hope so. Richard, I could talk to you for hours because this is all fascinating stuff for me. But please, everyone, if you want to hear from one of the absolute apex operators of LinkedIn, come to Birmingham in March. In On the 21st of March, Birmingham, UK, get your ticket at uplift-live.com. You can see Richard in action and seven other Apex operators of LinkedIn talking on a whole day event focused purely on LinkedIn. It's going to be fantastic. Richard, thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to meet you in person. Thank yeah. you for coming all the way over from Spain to join us. And I'll see you in March. Cheers. Yeah. Looking forward to it, John. Thank you.